So, so I guess we have to take a break for a little bit from playing Diablo 4 because we have some news about an incoming hotfix change in our next reset in uh, season 2 about balance tuning. We have we have we have paused our balance tuning changes for the last couple of weeks or so and now Blizzard comes back with some more changes for specs and classes. This time around, more focus is going to be put on tanks and healers. No, no, we are still having some DPS specs being touched. In particular, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six DPS specs getting touched. But the one that's also more interesting is that Blizzard thought that, for example, most of the tanks were going to be receiving some changes, for example. So in this next reset, by Tuesday and Wednesday, we will get these changes. The first in line is the change to Blood DK, and that's about damage, of course. All damage abilities are increased by 8% for Death Knight. Now, as you know, damage is very important for tanks. This isn't vanilla anymore. It's not TBC. We have Mythic Plus. In Mythic Plus, you want to go fast, and one of the key elements of going fast is doing a lot of damage. And since tanks are 1 in 5, tanks are 20% of the entire group, the fact that tanks can do a lot of damage can be very good in Mythic Plus. Unfortunately, this is not something that blood DKs have been very good at recently, because the damage of a blood death knight tank is, generally speaking, far below the other top tanks. It's at the moment far below Prot Paladin, as well as the two, you know, resurging, the two rising tank specs in terms of damage, Brewmaster and Vengeance. So BDK at the moment is quite far below. So this 8% damage increase is going to help definitely not nearly enough to make them match their damage but it's a start so it's a it's a decent start for blood death knight still definitely not going to turn them into some sort of dps powerhouse but it's good that blizzard can acknowledge at least that they are one of the tanks on the lower end of damage right now then we have a change to druid once in a while we don't get our weekly change to balance this time around the fix is to feral blizzard is saying they want to change the average number of stacks of the two piece set bonus and cause the four piece set bonus to trigger less often but we have a bigger chunk of agility when it procs so the chance for Shadows of the Predator to reset is reduced by 15%, but in return now the four-piece set bonus increases agility by 8%. I mean, it's good, it's good, it helps you spend, or rather waste, less combo points, but, you know, it's like a 1% initial preliminary sims, it's like barely a 1% damage increase, it looks like, so, you know, it's not really going to change much, besides maybe making it a little bit smoother with your usage of combo points for Feral. Then we have a change, something we didn't think was going to happen at the start of the expansion, which is a buff to the lacking damage of preservation. You know, back in the day of a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago even in Season 1, preservation was one of the highest damage dealing healers. However, losing their old tier set, giving them instant cast living flames, made them lose a lot of damage. Also, we can say losing the staff, losing the evoker staff with big damage on a healer was actually also very good for them in Season 1. In Season 2, they lost all of that and their damage has gotten much lower. Blizzard is compensating for this lack of damage by buffing the damage of Disintegrate by 15%. This is still, you know, okay in single target, of course, and completely worthless in AoE. They will still be lacking or lagging behind in AoE damage with the way other healers, in particularly something like Rest of Shaman, can do in terms of AoE damage. But still, it is better than nothing in terms of higher single target damage. Now we have the first of the actual DPS buffs, because the one to Feral is whatever. This one, though, does have a tangible number, which is 5%. Beast Mastery Hunter is getting all of the damage dealt by you and your pet's abilities increased by 5%. So, if you have kept track with the situation recently, it's not that either Beast Mastery or Marksmanship are doing too well in the raid, but clearly, if Hunters were choosing one of the two, they were choosing Marksmanship over BM in the raid and in Mythic Plus as well. When it comes to Mythic Plus, Marksmanship Hunter is the more popular of the two specs. Not really at high keys, they are very close to each other at high keys, so maybe this one will actually edge even more Beast Mastery in, in Mythic Plus over Marksmanship. This is the first of the significant buffs when it comes to DPS specs that we will see today. However, 
However, there is actually something even bigger, because Fire Mage is the only one of the mage specs which receives a buff. And this is a, a series of buffs, because Pyro is 5% damage increase buff, Fire Blast and Fireball plus Phoenix Flame and Scorch get a 10% damage increase buff. Now, the reason why only fire out of the mages is getting a buff perhaps has to do with something like this. Perhaps it might have to do with the fact that reports show and studies say and scientists discovered that fire mage is dog shit. That's why they're getting a damage buff overall. Now, this buff totals out to be roughly, again, preliminary results to be somewhere in the realm of a 6% damage increase for fire mage. So it's definitely something, it definitely helps them overall. You know, if, if you want to see things from a glass half full perspective, at the end of the day, Blizzard is planning to rework many things of mages, as well as in particular of fire in 10.1.5. So there is, there is a whole slew of modifications on our way in the next patch. So it's not that this one was going to be the decider on whether or not fire was going to get better or worse. There are, there are plenty more important tuning changes coming soon. So this one is at best a band-aid, you know, a quick temporary fix for the spec. Now there is something, however, that might be a little bit more confusing to some of the bigger parts of the player base, which is the fact that Brewmaster Monk has gotten its damage buffed by quite a bit. First of all, all of their damage is buffed by 3%, and then Rising Sun Kick by 10%, Blackout Kick by 30%, and Tiger Palm by 30%. Now, I said it might come weirdly to you because you might have seen or noticed, for example, in Mythic Plus Keys, that Brewmaster Monks actually do have a lot of damage. As a matter of fact, they have more or less the highest damage out of tanks. However, two things are relevant in this. Relevant thing number one, Brewmaster Monk has been nerfed recently. Yes, it was a hotfix to fix a bug, but that was still netting out to be a nerf because their weapons of order, their big cooldown, was scaling the damage increase of non-spec specific things, like the damage from rings, the damage from trinkets, the damage from enchants, the damage from weapon effects, for example. All of those things were getting their damage increase from your weapons of order, and Blizzard fixed that so that now all of those things will do their base damage without being increased by weapons of order, which netted out to be a nerf for Brewmaster. Then you also have the thing that the abilities being buffed are basically strictly for, for single targets. It's not nearly as relevant in AoE. Most of the AoE of the Brewmaster is gonna come from Breath of Fire, from Keg Smash, from Exploding Keg, not really Blackout Kick or Rising Sun Kick or Tiger Palm. So it's not really a relevant damage increase for, for AoE, just strictly for single target. So overall, it's a still a net nerf for Brewmaster, especially in AoE, the, the nerf, the hotfix change to Weapons of Order. This one is more, you know, somewhat of a tiny compensation buff for the spec, more centered around, around single target rather than AoE damage. There is also our 74th buff to Mistweaver. It looks like every week there is some type of buff to Mistweaver, despite the fact that they still remain somewhat on the, on the low level, on the low end of healers. All healing abilities are increased by 3% for Mistweaver. So not about damage, but just about healing increase. Another spec which was somewhat fitting the slot of the Fire Mage, but for melee, was Assassination. Assassination was not having a good time, has not been having a good time for quite a bit, and now they get all ability damage increased by 5%. This is still not going to change the fact that they are not going to have a good time, but again, you know, let's throw them a bone, let's give them something to, to acknowledge their existence. They will still need more than this to, to fix many of their issues, many of their core issues as a spec for Assassination. The last of the relevant changes when it comes to classes as a whole goes to Warrior. So we have two changes, one for Arms and one for Prot. Of course, Fury is doing well. Fury is the better performer in the raid and is also one of the more popular spec in Mythic Plus. So why would you want to change Fury? First is the buffs to Arms. All ability damage increased by 4% and on top of that, fatality, fatal mark damage is increased by 15%, deep wounds, dot damage is increased by 5% and then rend increased by 5% as well. 
So this will net out to be over a 5 to 6% damage buff to Arms Warriors as well. Arms Warrior were in that similar bottom of the barrel, bottom 5 position where Assassination was, where Beast Mastery was, and where Fire and where Feral Druid were. So it's kind of funny that we look at the bottom 5 specs in the raid at this moment, and those are the 5 DPS specs that get the majority of the buffs. The other spec, meanwhile, of Warrior getting buffed is Protection, so yet another tank. Same discussion, same reasoning for Blood Death Knight. At the moment, Protection Warriors are not really doing or not really performing at the same level of the other tanks, so they give them an 8% damage buff just like Blood Death Knight. However, they give more to, to Protection Warrior, since, you know, Protection Warrior is in a worse situation than Blood Death Knight. Auto attack damage is also increased by 10%, spell blocks duration is increased to 30 seconds instead of 20, and Thunderlord now causes each enemy hit by Thunderclap to reduce the remaining cooldown of Demo Shout by 1.5 seconds up to a maximum of 4.5 instead of by 1 second up to a maximum of 3 seconds. So a more a higher uptime of Demo Shout, a higher uptime of damage reduction on the enemies you hit with Demo Shout in Mythic Plus. So that's also a, a defensive increase for Protection Warrior, not just the damage buff that Blood Death Knight, for example, has received. These are the hot fixes planned for the next reset for all of these specs. Most of these are agreeable, as I mentioned, most of these DPS specs were literally at the bottom of performance at the moment, so it's kind of hard to, to argue for those specs not receiving a buff. For the tanks, again, same thing, Protection Warrior was not doing that well whatsoever. Maybe you could argue Blood Death Knight, you know, Blood Death Knight at the moment is, at the end of the day, the more popular tank in the raid and the second most popular tank in Mythic Plus. So, yes, they have low damage, yes, it's not that strong, but at the very least they were still meta, they were still very popular anyways. So maybe you might have, for example, focused on buffing Guardian Druid, you know, just to name one, for example, instead of Blood Death Knight. But still, even 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 taking into account their popularity, their damage was one of their their few bigger problems. So this is what we have for today going live in a few days when it comes to balance tuning. Let me guys know, of course, down in the comments, which of these specs do you actually think were warranted, were deserving of some more buffs or some more changes, or if you are the opposite way, if you thought some of the specs might have deserved some nerfs, like for example, damage nerfs to Resto Shaman or maybe damage nerfs to Shadow Priest, something along these lines that Blizzard is not seen at the moment at the very least. So with this out of the way, we are leaving each other now on this Saturday. We are thanking, of course, as usual, all of the Patreon supporters for the contribution and the help to the growth of the channel. And you can still, of course, support in plenty of other free ways, like liking and commenting down below, as well as subscribing to the channel itself. Now, you can also still support by following me over on my Twitter, as well as following me over on my stream on Twitch. So with these things out of the way, thank you guys again for watching. See you guys tomorrow. And in the meantime, well, I guess uh, I guess back to Diablo 4. We are still in here with my tomboy going around in this mansion trying to find Lilith. Very spooky.